I made a film series once, and I was nervous all the time. You made a film series? Yes, looking at this huge camera. Luckily, I could look at you, so I wasn't nervous. But looking at an enormous camera was really scary. There's something about cameras, right? Well, you have to pretend they're dear friends. I was amused. Today, we have something called methods. Every graduate school has a requirement, methods in capital letters, uh, which is imposed upon whatever you want to do. And sadly, my own beloved teacher, Erwin Panofsky, may have started this a little bit because he produced something called an iconographer's kit. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to do iconographical studies, you whipped out this little kit, which was supposed to give you A, B, C, D, E, F, the way to find a symbolic solution to whatever you were doing. But perhaps that's rather a pity. Maybe we should invent our own kits. We shouldn't take them from anybody else. And he was himself a very generous and open mind. And strangely enough, uh, I knew him, of course, very well. He was the one who wrote the obituary for Abby Warburg. He was Abby Warburg's prize student. So these things all go in a circle. And um, perhaps in my own life, perhaps in all our lives, they go in circles. We start somewhere. We think we're going far away. You started uh, in one society. You've come here. Who knows where you're going to go back to? And um, perhaps that's the answer to methods. There's no way to pin anything down, like uh, putting a pin through a butterfly's head. Uh, let the butterfly fly and lead you where you want to go. For a lot of the art history programs, they really do require you to take all these classes on methods for incoming graduate school students. So do you see that as, um, then do you think there should be some kind of changes to that current system? I do. I don't think there should be any. I don't think there is any overarching, overriding method. I think every work of art presents its individual problems. I should say that my own daughter thinks I'm completely wrong and says there are methods and you should be uh, adhering to them, but it, perhaps this is generational. Perhaps I'm a fossil. Perhaps I'm romantic in believing that one can dispense with method. Maybe intrinsically it's always hidden under the surface. Maybe it's determined by the particular period in which we're born. And then it changes every 25, 30 years. Maybe there's a new method. There are influences from the arts, influences from the sciences, which may modify our methods. But I feel the whole idea that a student is supposed to listen to somebody else telling them how to do what they want to do is a rather sad situation. It perhaps makes you afraid to be wrong. And you can't be a good student if you can't be wrong. It's as important to be wrong as it is to be right, because that's really the way you learn. All my students are interested in the art of tomorrow, because that's what's going to sell. And they're right. They want to take courses in the art of tomorrow, which I obviously don't teach. But they go academically as close as they can, because that's where so many jobs are, in museums, in criticism, in art dealing. And how do you advise them when they are <laughs> following the, uh, the path that everyone is following? I think they should follow what they want to do. Some people are born to be successful art dealers or journalists or critics or curators, and they should do exactly what they want. I don't think there's a right or a wrong. Uh, if some of them are very strongly individualistic, they'll be successes as well. So I don't think I'd want to advise them too much. Anyway, it would scare them. <laughs> and nobody wants advice anyway. <laughs>